Hey, boys and girls, it is The Upgrade, and this is a special bonus episode because we wanted to talk about this weekend's UFC 252. I am Gary Mutley, and I am joined by the lovely and talented Len Carmichael, Landmine Studios, and uh, our special guest for the day is none other than John Wren, joining us again. Yeah, but my episode hasn't aired yet, so... Yeah, whatever. Your episode's coming up soon. This is your first appearance thanks to time travel. Yes. But, I mean, I I figure you're just going to be a regular pop pop in on the show, so it doesn't matter. Uh, People will get used to you. So, UFC 252 coming to us from the Apex facility out in Las Vegas. Uh, Miocic versus Cormier, part three. Uh, the rubber match. Uh, you know, I had trepidation running into this card because I was like, do I really want to pay for this again? I didn't actually pay, but regardless, I'm paying with my time. Um, I mean, what are they What are they charging for these things now? Is like it, 70 it, bucks. That's what I thought. Like, uh, I, like that's yeah, just I'm, so out of control. Like, I, 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 I struggle to pay for this stuff. Like, especially in a COVID time where I can't put a bunch of people together. Yeah, if there was a bunch of people, I don't have much of a problem because then it's like 10 bucks a head, so. I mean, it's also interesting because I, I hadn't really thought about it this way, but they make a lot of money usually off of bars and shit like that, and now they can't. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you're talking about bars in Trenton who are clearly allowing a whole ton of people <laughs> into them. But that's a story well, for a whole nother day. Trenton and some other places. But my my first question for you guys, because I heard this mentioned a few times over the course of the night. Uh, these guys were talking about it was a smaller octagon. Yeah. Did I, did I miss? Uh, I guess I missed that part. Like, what, what they, that's they all have, about? They have two different size octagons. Okay. So they have, like, the regular 30-foot octagon, which they would use in most situations that were in an arena. And then they have the smaller 25 foot cage that they would use at like the Palms or um, any of the smaller venues. Um, I think it's 25 footer in the old fighter too. Yeah, and they also it was this it's the same size cage that the WEC used. Okay, I I remember the Ultimate Fighter back then they were using a smaller cage. I just I hadn't heard any mention of a smaller cage in a while, and then all of a sudden. I heard a lot of talk about it last night, and I didn't know if they'd used it recently, and I just missed it or what. Pretty yeah, much all. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Ren. They, they, they've been using it, but I think the reason that they made this big comment is that they were finally having like a heavyweight main event, and the idea of having Cormier and Miochix in a small cage. How is that going to play out? That actually was should have benefited Cormier, but we'll get into the main event later. And I think that was like the whole big like talk about it, is that it was going to change the dynamic of the fight. Yeah, that that was one of the things that they mentioned that I took notice of, and I, I just was like, oh, okay, we're using a smaller cage. I didn't know. I personally, and not even to get into the main event, I like the smaller cage just as a generality. I feel like it forces the action a lot more, and that, well, let's get into it. So the first fight on the early prelims was Kai Kamaka versus Tony Kelly. I feel like if that was in a bigger cage we may not have gotten the action that we received because there would have been more room to escape. They went at it. Ren, did you catch that fight? I didn't catch either of the first two fights. The first fight I saw was the um, Yoder Souza fight. Okay, okay, I'm gonna tell you right now, if you have 15 minutes left in your day after this call, go watch that fight. I, that- I would have to second that because this fight, Usually, I mean, I've said before, I'm not a big fan of decisions because a lot of times it's just let's dance around for a little while and fuck around and not really try to do anything. These guys from top to bottom, no points bullshit, no dancing around. And they're both new guys. This is the first UFC fight for both these guys. And it was Uh, a solid fucking fight from top to bottom, all three rounds. So, like, what I call it is that they made me want to see them again yes, like there is absolutely. no 
situation where you're going to tell me that Kamaka or Kelly are going to fight, and I'm not going to at least be interested enough to tune in regardless of where they are on the card. If they put on enough that, like, a, a seriously gritty rock em, sock em, knock em down performance, and I was impressed, just, you know, styles make fights, and they had a great style for each other to come in there yeah. and put on the performance that they did. It was it was a great fight, and all three judges scored at 29-28, so it wasn't domination. You know, one guy took two rounds, one guy took one round, and overall, like I said, just from beginning to end, it was a real solid fight, and just like you said, I want to see these guys fight again. I would watch this fight again. If they booked this fight again, I would gladly tune in and watch this exact yep. same fight, part two. I, I definitely would, too. So, and it's 29-28 across the board, but it's going into the third round, it's 28-28. Like, it's it's tight. Yeah. But that's, yeah, whoever that's was gonna, I mean, you know, whoever was going to win that fight won in the last round. No, but that, that's perfect because it was a good fight, like I said, from top to bottom. I, I, there's nothing else I could say about it. It was just a good, solid fight. And, Ren, like we said, if you haven't seen it, it's definitely worth watching. I will check Great it out. Great fight. Now, so then they're... That second us. fight. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, that fight could have been me and you in there. I for mean, that matter. All right, you got you got Chris Dawkins, who is uh, I believe they said he's a Philly cop. Yep. There's a joke in there somewhere about he's good with his knees, but uh, you know, <laughs> we'll, we'll let that we'll let that just sit there. Oh, <laughs> and and Parker Porter, who is a big fucking boy. Yeah, weighed no. in at 264. Yeah, I mean, and, and he and he me, was all every single pound of that 264. Well, let me tell you something. When you got a guy who weighs in at 264 and on his back is tattooed "Respect All, Fear None," that dude is looking to fuck somebody up. Yeah, I mean, he came in ready to fight, but he just wasn't fast enough. Like Dawkins just had his number when it came to volume, distance. And just speed. He, like, I mean, that was the issue. First of all, those guys were throwing bowling balls at each other. <laughs> the whole time. Because th the those were time. not, like, normal hands. Like, those like those dudes were swinging fucking bowling balls at each other. Because <laughs> I just saw the two of them walk in, and I'm like, oh, fuck. Yeah. This is going to be... So, Ren... It's Dawkins... either going to be a gas fest, or it's going to be some serious pain. So, Dawkins is... Probably six four. I, I'm gonna guess he's around six foot four. I think they said he was six four. And I mean, he looked all of six four, and the 250 pounds that he weighed in at. Neither of these guys are winning any bodybuilding competitions. Oh, no. I will tell you right now. Oh, I mean, both. Subs. Yeah, both of them. But Dawkins was more like mobile, just in general. Where Porter was very portly. He was okay. very round. It was it was like mini butter being in there. No. <laughs> it was like it was like cabbage came back. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, and he was throwing haymakers just like cabbage. Oh man! So just watching those hands, I'm like, oh man, this is gonna be bad. Yeah, I mean, if he had if he had really clipped Dawkins at any point, Dawkins was going to sleep. Oh yeah, yeah, like, because it's like it's like getting hit with a Mack truck. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm seeing it ended in the first. Oh yeah, but like it, it had to because in. otherwise it was just gonna be slow motion. Oh, yeah, it was going to be because done. I mean, know, they were both like, gassing by the end of that round. Yeah, uh, in it, it, end of that round, then the next two rounds are just going to be slow motion, just gas fest, like, uh... Yeah, I mean, they, they did our, uh, us a favor. So he hit him with a uh, couple punches and, and, and a knee and knocked him down and, and just took those, him out of it. Those were some hard shots. It was like yeah, three shots, sure. and then as he was going down, he caught a knee to the face, and it was a wrap. Yeah, bro, it was done. Oh, man, it was, it was, uh, you knew it was going to be an ugly fight. And I think they said he weighed in at 264, but the day was of, like he, he was like 282 or something. Yeah, and so. when he hit the ground, he bounced. <laughs> <laughs> I just see Red rolling his eyes. It's like, oh, god damn. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Those dudes just throwing fucking ham hocks at each other. That's what it's like. That's so much going on. You put a small referee like Keith Peterson in a fight like that. <laughs> <laughs> the no-nonsense Keith Peterson. Funny, yeah. funny you guys say that, because one of the things that I was thinking later on was, uh, oh, well, Dominic Cruz is on commentary, so he can't complain about 
the smell of liquor and cigarettes. No, oh, God. So then that uh, brings us to the preliminary card, which got That's kicked off. In. Okay, that was a women's straw wheat fight with Livia Souza versus Ashley Yoder. Going into this fight, I'm looking at it, and, and in my head, I'm like, Yoder should go through this girl. I, you know, I've seen Yoder fight, and she's lost a couple fights recently, but I didn't see anything previously from Souza that made me think that Yoder wasn't going to just kind of run right through her. And boy, was I fucking wrong. <laughs> like, I was so wrong. Right? If I had bet on this, I'd be mad at myself. My thing is, though, they try to hype Ashley Yoder, and she's not really that good. I, so no, I, I don't think like, she's... So, so uh, when I, 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 I kind of put the fight on... Like, I had, a, I had, like, two people over, and we were, like, getting ready, and I was, like, watching it, like, in passing, and I was just like, yeah, this is kind of how I thought this fight would go. I didn't... I mean, I don't know much about Souza going into the fight, but I was like, Ashley Yoder, like, she gets all this, like... she's. I think she's two and... Well, as of last night, she's two and five. Yeah, now she's two and There's, five. And Ronda Marcos beat the crap out of her in her last fight, so I was just like... I, when I heard Ashley Yoder, I'm like, oh, that's a girl that they want want to be good, but she's just not. And last night, I think they, I think a, pr- a point was proven that she's not this girl she, that they wanted yeah. to be. She's reached the I can't trust her point at this point, so I, I'm not going to be tuning in to see her ever again unless yeah, I, she starts blowing people's doors off. Which she definitely didn't do last night. Uh, not at last all. Night. I mean, they hyped up, you know, the, the reach advantage that she has, but it was just not... Yeah, I mean, she wasn't throwing well. It didn't matter. Like, there were some decent combos, and, like, the takedown defense was good, but overall it was, eh. Yep. The only but, reason I think she even won one round is that I feel like Souza started gas towards the end of the, the third round. Yeah, that's probably... Because yeah, that's the only round I gave her was the third. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have given her all... It, Souza all three rounds, but... But it wasn't even close, honestly. I mean, Souza was like that, like that chihuahua that just won't stop. <laughs> <laughs> like she, you know, there was just definite size difference, but she was just going like, God damn, from like early on, I was like, ooh, she just kept on. But yeah. uh, overall, I didn't, I didn't think much of that fight. Uh, for me, this is a skip it fight. Uh, you know, yeah. if you're if you're trying to play catch up and just take a look through these these fights, this is one you can just skip right over. I agree. Um, next fight was a catch weight fight. Because um, Brown weighed in at 146 and a half pounds. Oh, but by, by oh god, I'm I'm by a I'm, half pound, really? Yep, by a half pound. Go take a leak, dude. <laughs> god damn it! Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Why did you like, just go take a dump, dude? Just go dump. Yeah, just squeeze it out, man. A half pound. I could probably lose a half pound in like. 30 seconds if given the chance i will say this as someone who has cut weight for fights before like that half pound thing it all depends upon what scale you're standing on so i mean sometimes i give these i'm like man like that sucks because it could be the hotel scale is like fucked up right so they if they're if they're cutting if they're like man we're just gonna make it we're just gonna make that one right mark and they step on the scale that's in their bathroom in their hotel and it says 160 or 146 even and then they go downstairs this is 146.5 i mean I mean, it's your job still to make the weight, so I can't really, like, you know, give them too much of a pass. But some of those half-pound things, I'm like, man, was that the scale in the bathroom? Like, that was fucked up or, or what? Hey, right. you're j- when you sign that contract, you got two jobs. Make weight and get in the cage. Oh, yeah. If you, don't, if you, do, yeah. If you do nothing else. Oh, no, I'm not, I'm not giving him the pass. He still missed weight. That's that's his bad. But sometimes the half-pound ones, I'm like, ah, oh, what, what was the story with that? Right. So this fight was a catchway. It was Daniel Chavez versus TJ Brown. I thought it was a good fight, but it went to a decision. I mean, there's some good action in it. Um, for me, it's a if you got nothing better to do time frame. But like, I wouldn't tell anybody to run out and watch this fight. It wasn't anything special to me. Yeah, I thought you it was very. Anything? I thought it was very mid level. I mean. There were some good combos and stuff, but at some point it just kind of started to drag, and I was just like, eh. Yeah, I mean, the only but, thing that made me feel good about the fight was that A, Brown lost after missing weight, and B, that Chavez took 14 years to get to the fucking big dance and yeah. fin- and actually got a win out of it. I will say he looked like a seasoned vet in that he, you know, he acquitted himself well, but it 
also if if TJ Brown was anybody better than TJ Brown, he would have blown Chavez's doors off. Well, well Chavez, TJ- Chavez said after the fight that he he just fought like a week ago in some other organization for like a five rounder, but he right. won in the first round. So I mean, he wasn't even training for this fight. Yep, he just kind of showed up in shape. Hey. Doesn't matter. You signed that contract. Well, no, I'm just saying Chavez won. So yeah, I mean, I mean he won, was, which him. is good. I'm just saying he wasn't no, he wasn't really training for the fight. So I mean, I give him a smidge of a pass on that. I mean, he won. I think him 14 years it took him to get there. Hey, if if you are still pushing for 14 years, I more power to you, bro. I think they said that about a few people, by the way. Even like from the the early prelims, I think there were a couple people that got the fight on like a week's notice or something. Yeah, Porter got the the fight yeah. on a, like a two weeks notice, and he's been fighting for like twelve years and finally got called up. Yeah, and he's probably going to be a one and done. The only other thing that I'd say about this fight is that, you know, uh, T.J. Brown had that fucking softball on his shin. Bro, his leg looked terrible. He took some kicks. Ooh, that man, was, that was near in Uriah Faber level pain. <laughs> oh man, yeah, that that was you know, and and like you said. It's good to see him take some beating because he missed weight. So yeah. whatever. But that was that was really a you know very middle of the road fight. Yeah. And, yeah. Skip it if you don't. If you don't. If yeah. you're not. If you don't got 15 minutes to waste, don't waste it on this. The next one is definitely not 15 minutes. No, you could you could watch this almost on uh, on on like a Instagram story for that matter. Uh, women's straw weight. We have Birna Jandroba versus uh, Felice Herrig. Who is now, known? She used to be known for her Instagram stories. Yes. Yes. Although she's still. I don't know. I don't follow her thir- anymore. I don't know. She's still thirsty on social media like she used to be. <laughs> <laughs> she gave that up to Angela Magana or what? When Felice Herrig made the 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 transition in the UFC, I had much higher hopes for her than she's proven out over time because like i followed her a little bit before she got here and man like jandroba went right through her like a hot knife through butter like took her down and and basically was searching for submissions as soon as it hit the ground and all you saw was felice herrick just drowning yeah and i'm thinking to myself you've been training for x number of years and i get it she's a black belt and you're not a black belt look you look literally like a fish out of water it was it was pretty terrible my thing is, is we, and Glenn we saw Felice fight a couple of years ago when she fought Paige Van Zandt and Paige Van yep. Zandt took her down at will basically in that fight and I would say even at that point like if that should have been the fight where she learned like something like okay I gotta go and work on this like crazy mm-hmm. and, she, and it was so and so it's been a couple of years and she got taken down like I think that girl would take me down just like you know yeah I, maybe I put up a little bit better fight and I haven't even grappled in years but I'm like this is a professional fighter and she and like I know that Felice Herrick had the um she had like that knee problem for like the last right. year or whatever but that's right. still, yeah. this you, was her first fight in two years yeah but you don't get taken down that easy if you're training like especially at that level she should not have been felice herrig at this point should not have been run through like she was exactly and it leads me to believe that maybe her time here is done which may be another theme for this show yeah <laughs> we'll get to that <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, honestly, people, if you want to see a quick submission, you want to see somebody that's really good on the ground, take a look at this fight. You'll be impressed. It won't take you a long time to get through it. Yeah, it was it was just domination, really. Like, I don't think Felice really put up any... She threw one strike, at all. and that was what got her taken down. Like, yeah. Literally, and that was it. Yeah. Game over. Yeah. So I think she might have put, put pulled off one punch from the bottom when she should have been trying to escape. Yeah, it sounds about right. So the next fight was a facial hair challenge. <laughs> Vince Pichel with the mustache of the night versus Jim Miller, who had a pretty solid beard. So wait, I want to review Vince Pichel's tattoos on the inside of his arms. His nickname from hell, like <laughs> for, for trash tattoos. Those actually look pretty fucking cool. Uh, but like. <laughs> How could you look at yourself in the mirror and think that this was a good plan? Because <laughs> like, I looked at that and I, I, like, I laughed. I was like, whoever the artist was did a really good job. 
but like you look like a fucking dumbass at the same time. <laughs> Maybe that's why he grew the Dan Severn mustache just to throw people <laughs> off. So I, you know, I didn't know what what I was gonna get out of this fight because Jim Miller is chinny. He's old man. This is his 36th fight, most fights in the UFC, in in all of UFC history. He's can just, I can I ask a random question? Do either yeah. of you guys know Jim Miller personally? I don't. No, I uh, I did a Spartan race with him like many moons ago, and that's the only interaction I've ever had with that guy. Okay, because somebody told me years ago that he's a hardcore guy, and I don't remember who told me that, and I don't know if it's true. Yeah, I'm so not I was sure. just curious if maybe you guys know. Man, he se- he seems like a country boy. Like him and his brother seem like they're like, you know, they they would rather ride their Jim Deers on like the like the farm and whatnot, and not listen to like sick of it all or something. <laughs> I mean, they're from they're from that northwest corner of, of New Jersey. They're from Sparta, yeah. right? like Sparta, yeah. So it's like right by where you had that race, like yeah. legit- legitimately same town. Yeah. Um, you know, Jim Miller. I think it's time. It's uh, definitely time. It's. I think it's been time, yeah. and it's not like that I, I said the theme of this show. Yeah, it's not that I don't think that he's. I don't think he's like. Uh, what am I trying to say here? He's been knocked out a few times. But I just think the game has passed him by. Exactly. Oh, Thirty-six fights and you never earned a title shot. Like it's, it's right. Time it's either. time. Like I get it. He's making money and putting you know food on the table. But there are probably better ways to make that kind of money uh, without getting punched in the mouth. Yeah. Yeah. It's one thing if you're Iron Mike Sharp, but in <laughs> in M- <laughs> like full on MMA, right? It's, it's not really good for your health. Oh, God, Iron Mike, sir. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's time. I just, you know, Bruce Buffer is talking to you. It's time. Yeah. And it's just, he's not bad. He's not yeah. terrible. It's just. And, I mean, there were moments in this fight. You keep punishing yourself, you know? There were moments in this fight where I thought maybe he was going to pull it off. Like, he had a couple spots where. You know, just another inch or two, and he might have actually subbed Vince. But, you know, Vince is clearly the stronger competitor. I mean, Jim Miller at this point looks like like my dad, basically. Just <laughs> not perfectly in shape by any stretch, but still skilled. Like, you know what I mean? Right. So it's like, eh, I, I just think his time, the time has passed, and, and it's time for him to hang him up. He's got the record right now. Cerrone will catch him. Because R- Cerrone needs to quit too, but you know yeah. he's got a fight booked, so they'll you know be tied again. It's not a bad thing to be tied with with fucking Donald Cerrone for the m- most amount of fights in in UFC history. I mean that especially since Cerrone fights at. like every three weeks, so right. Try, <laughs> so you, you definitely kept a weird pace if you're beating Donald Cerrone who fights like you know six times a year. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So that wraps up the preliminary card and brings us to the main card. So I, you know, I had to stop streaming from ESPN Plus and find my way to this other situation in which I was able to watch this card. And like, you know, I found the spot that's providing me with uh, a solid feed, and uh, it only actually went down once in the time frame, which was a positive. Um, but it was at the end of this fucking fight, right at the end of the <laughs> of a Bantamweight fight between Marab Devashelli and John Dodson. And Dodson looked terrible in this fight. Yeah, in my opinion, he looked slow. He wasn't like movement. He was throwing like one shot at a time. Like not going up to Bantamweight was a bad move for him. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Because I, I, it's so funny because I was thinking that when I'm watching the fight, I'm like. Wow, remember when John Dodson was somebody that everybody really talked about with speed? Yeah, well, and everything, now, and now it's just like he's just nothing. The fights that he had with with the fight he had with Mighty Mouse. Yep, like the stuff of legend. Well, two yeah, little dudes with speed, physical power, and, and just like good body presence. That was and, like watching a fight on fast forward. Right. And then watching this John Dotson is literally like watching the shell of a man attempt to, to throw a punch because, like, he's just waiting the whole time. And I get maybe you're trying to measure him up, 
but dude, you didn't even barely throw anything the whole fucking fight. Yep, cost me my parlay, that son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. one, once again, like I said, theme for the show, it's Maybe time. Maybe it's time. Maybe it's time. It is time. I mean, he has like, I'm looking at his record now, he has 34 fights. It, it probably is time. Yeah, well, I mean, like, you can only do this for so long. Yeah. What, what's weird is that when I was looking it up earlier, I'm going to pull it up again just to be sure, but I believe he recently signed... Yeah, just in June, he signed a new five-fight deal. No, oh, God. Like, why would you... All right, so if if he intends on staying and fighting, I think he needs to go back down. I think the extra weight, even though it's only 10 pounds, is throwing his whole game off. I agree. And he's fighting dudes that are significantly bigger than him. I mean, mm -hmm. again, it's only 10 pounds, but that 10 pounds is really like 15 or 20 on yeah. fight day. Yeah, now, exactly. And there's no DJ anymore in the division, so that was his kryptonite. So yep. go back and fight these other guys. Yeah, there's no DJ and there's no Benavidez. So, and, there's no and even if Benavidez is still fighting, he is not the Benavidez of old. So, so anyway, the less said about this fight, the better. Uh, there was a unanimous decision, and there was an even even a, a, a 10 8 round in there. Or no, 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 it's not 10 8. Sorry. He just lost all, all three cards right across the board. I thought there was one 10-8 in there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the less said, the better. Yeah, it, it didn't really do anything. And, it, and like I said, it's a shame because Dodson used to, he used to be somebody. Yep. I used to be somebody. <laughs> um, so the next fight, catch weight. Again, 149 pounds, 149 and a half pounds. Uh, Daniel Pineda versus uh, Herbert Burns. Burns came in three and a half pounds over the 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 you know the max weight of 146. And uh, yo, that to me sounds like you didn't even fucking try. There must be an injury that we don't know about, or that's, like that's you what just they were speculating. Care. They were speculating on commentary that maybe there was some sort of injury and he couldn't train like he usually does. Yeah, but again, and I said it earlier, you signed the fucking contract. Make the fucking wait if you exactly. Like, that's try that's here. one thing, and and I know as much as I don't like Dana White, I agree with him on it. It's like you know what, yeah, that's the one thing you got to do. Yep. Get it done. Other guys wonder, are doing it. I wonder how much COVID is actually playing a part in the weight cutting experience, because I I see some of these fights are getting booked like, and I'm not saying that they have the pass. You sign the contract, you have to make the weight. Like that's your fault for saying I can make X weight in a couple of weeks but i wonder how fast some of these fights are getting booked because because of covid and how many like even some of these like upcoming pay-per-views that they have like now granted like gaichi and khabib is like far enough away that they can worry about that when it comes time but some of these fights are, are being booked really fast like i remember they were like this because like, there's like a fight like every weekend basically they just yeah. keep announcing them i'm like how long have these guys have these guys known about the fight longer than we have like what, what's going on here i don't think so i think they're just running and gunning on this because well, what it comes down to is they got a um they have a certain amount of fights that they need to put on within yeah, yeah. the calendar year yeah, so like that they get their shit. yeah so they get their payment from uh from espn so they don't you know default right. on their deal so they need to get this fucking content out and they're looking for ways to get it done by hook or by crook. So, you know, this is this is the level of event that they are putting out for us. Not necessarily UFC 252, because I actually do think that this was a pretty good card. But then there's a card on Tuesday, which it's just there's nothing to watch on it. Yeah, it's like, well, oh, there's nothing else to go on Tuesday. The, one thing to what you said, John, is interesting because uh, we forgot to mention it earlier, talking about uh, the Felice fight, uh, she had to switch camps. I think she was the one that had to switch camps because the gym that she used to train at before was closed because of COVID, and she actually ended up training with a different team than she usually does. And I don't know, if, I haven't heard of that happening with other fighters, but it's another interesting side effect of, of this whole COVID thing. Right. If some of these people have to switch camps. Yeah, I wonder what, like, it's probably got to be state stuff because 
I'm not going to name any names, but I know a whole bunch of gyms in the Philly, like the tri-state area that were operating um, when they shouldn't have been. Now, they weren't letting like your average student come in, but fight team guys were getting in there and working, even though they weren't supposed to. So it must be like that state must be really cracking down if Felice Herrig, as a pro fighter, couldn't get in to do her quote unquote job. Yeah. That, that or maybe they had some kind of exposure. Yeah, that's true. They weren't they weren't specific about it, but but it is uh, you know like I said another side effect that that could affect a lot of fighters. So, yeah. uh, I just I'll haven't be, really heard it mentioned much. I'm gonna be interested in see if there's an uh, an outbreak at ATT. They just uh, announced today that uh, Austin, Mr. Van Zant, tested positive for COVID. Him and Paige are down in Florida training at the ATT school. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, so I, so I wonder if he, him being down there, he caught it and he, you know, infected someone at the at the gym. Oh boy! Yeah, that's gonna have some rolling issues if it mm-hmm. if that's the truth. Yeah. Well, yeah. no, he he definitely tested positive because before we went live, I was looking at her uh, Instagram and they were doing like a like a live Instagram and he was saying that he tested positive, then he took like a fast test that tested negative, but then they're waiting on the third test, but they won't get the results until like Wednesday. Mm. but he but he's he is saying he's sick like he's like i got the sniffles i'm congested and my head hurts so he's got symptoms that's yeah that's a wrap um well back to the fight pineda versus herbert burns uh ended it towards the end of the second round tko by elbows uh i thought the fight was that that ending was ugly I thought the fight was going really well both directions. Honestly, each each one of them had their moments in these in this fight. Yeah. But once it got to the point where Pineda was throwing the elbows, it was done. Like Well, first of all, Pineda was leaking pretty bad after round 1. Right. He got he got his eye uh, Yeah, it might have been a headbutt, but he like his eyebrow was like gaping open. You could see it at some points in round 2 and I was like, "Oh man, that's bad." Yeah. But then, but then once he got that that crucifix on, yep. it just was, it was on Burns. I was like, oh no! And, yeah, and once he started unloading those elbows, it was, and Burns looked so tired, he couldn't even. He was trying to think of every way to get out from underneath that crucifix, and there yeah. just was no escape. No, nope. and he just kept catching it and kept catching it, and I mean, it was a merciful end at the end uh, when when he was pulled off him. Yeah, yeah, it was definitely. Uh, I saw that, and I was like, "Oh no!" If he starts unloading on him with those elbows, it's going to be a quick wrap. And sure enough, he started, and they, and they killed this that This is fight. Gilbert Burns's brother. Now, yeah. my question is: Gilbert Burns and his team had to pull out of that previous fight due to COVID. Is that what impacted his the uh, Herbert's ability to fully train? Oh, is I that had- maybe? his brother isn't there with him like keeping him on track possible or just his gym maybe the whole gym was messed up because of it right and there was like a gap in time where he wasn't getting the right training because half his team had to be sitting in a house Mm -hmm. yeah i could definitely see that yeah i you know i'm gonna say that this fight was that 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 fight was worth uh tuning in to watch um just just for the end alone just to see a man you want to see a man struggle watch that <laughs> yeah. yeah that was bad so that brings us to the next fight which was a fight that i did not necessarily think i wanted to see and we'll get to the reasons why in a moment but it was heavyweights yarzino rosenstrike versus junior dos santos the fight ended by tko via punches in the middle of the third round Second so round. I mean, second round. Sorry, second second round. Um, I didn't want to see this fight because I don't want to see JDS fight anymore. Because I'm tired of watching him get knocked out, and we just saw it again. (laughs) Once again, another episode of It's Time. Yeah, and that that porno stash didn't help him either at all. The crazy thing is, is he looked good. I thought he was winning the fight until he got caught. Yep. And so. And you know what the shitty thing is, is my feed, like you were talking about how your feed went out once, like my feed went out literally, Rose of Strike, it landed the punch that knocked him down, and uh-huh. then my feed came back, and they were like hugging each other, like sitting down next uh-huh. to the page, and I was like, wait, what happened? So I had to like <laughs> find it, and I was like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> I'm like, that's, literally, that's as the punch that like he hits, like and drops him, is when like my feed froze, and I was like, god damn it. 
That's basically, happened, that's happened to me before, and I hate it. Since Kane put those hands on him on those two consecutive fights where he just beat the piss out of him, JDS ain't been the same. No, not at all. And like at this point, at, for the last six times you've lost, have all been knockouts. I I think it's time. To- I think it's time. Well, this was also the third in a row, right? For him. Yeah. So. And when you're getting hit by big boys, like those, yeah. you want to remember your kids' names. Like you need to, you need to stop getting punched in the face by guys that are 250 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not a good idea to keep doing that. It's I just mean, too much. I, I think he would be a great coach. Like maybe it's time to just transfer to only coaching. I agree. Well, he did that. He did the Ultimate Fighter, right? Wasn't he successful? Yeah. On that? Yeah. He was very successful on that. I thought he was a pretty good coach. I think it's time to move that direction. And please don't go to, like, bare-knuckle boxing or some other random place. Just stop fighting. Yeah. No, I think it's another guy. The game is past him. Yep. It's I mean, time. And and, I, and it's weird because, you know, uh, Dos Santos is, what, 36? Mm-hmm. He's 36. Dodson's 35. Miller is 36, yeah, right. so yeah, it's right like, it. yeah, but they it, have fight miles on them. Yep. Yeah, but I guess I, I guess is that becoming the ceiling for these guys now? Like that 35, 36 range? I think I, it all it, depends on how many punches you take, because you have like someone yeah. like Randy Couture who fought until he was like 45, and and looked good all up until like the very end. Yeah, yeah, but but in Randy's early days, the game was a little different. That's true. You know, so that's why I'm saying, like, looking at it this way, like, are we are we reaching the point now where, uh, you know, these guys are hitting this age and because of the way the game has been for them through their career, like maybe this is the top out point, you know, that's a is a valid point. Like, because, yeah, because I was looking at it earlier and I realized that all these guys are around the same age, 35, 36. And and yeah, some of these guys like Randy used to go into their 40s, but. When they were in their 20s, the fight game was not like what these guys were dealing with in their 20s. I think part of it also is like the timing of when you showed up, because a guy like Cormier is 41, going to be 42 soon or just turned 41. And you know what? He's still kind of he's got it like you could still put him in there in another fight and he would do perfectly fine. But he didn't take the same brain damage from like we'll call it 18 to 29 before he really got into doing MMA fully. So his fight mile years are still low considering how old he is. Well, he, then, he's 41. Right. And he fought his first MMA fight in 08, right? In 09. 09. Okay. So, so it's all, yeah, 11 years. Only 11 years, you know. So he was—he right. he didn't get into the game until he was 30. Exactly. So that's what I'm saying is like for some of these guys that started out. I mean, they're fighting. They're fighting at like 16 in some places, and then along the way, and then they're like 36. They're 20 years into getting punched in the exactly. mouth, and they just can't take it in anymore. Exactly. And Cormier actually didn't take a lot of damage in those early fights, especially at the no. heavyweight. Days. Yeah. When he was when he was the heavyweight, like with uh, strike force and whatnot, he, he was like, just taking people down. Yeah, he ne- he never lost yeah. a round. Never. He barely got touched. I mean, I remember when he ragdolled um, Josh Barnett. Yeah, well, it was rough. I, that was rough to watch. I don't even know if Barnett like landed a punch on him. He just got mauled for five, five rounds yeah. or three rounds or whatever the hell it was. Three rounds. Yeah, I think Dos Santos has, has reached his uh, end. Uh, Rosenstrike at the end of the fight calling out Nganu again. I think that was a fucking dumb idea, but it has <laughs> real brass balls, so I support it either way, but I, I still think it's dumb. Clearly, he wants to get his head punched off. <laughs> <laughs> One time wasn't enough. Yeah. Oh so quick. Like. <laughs> um, yeah, I think so, I think it's it's well established that calling out Nagano is probably not a good move. Yeah, last thing I'm ever doing. I'm never calling that dude out. And in fact, if I thought he was mad at me. I'd move. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I think I, I I hear Canada calling. I gotta go <laughs> anywhere. Oh my god. I'm, I I need you know full witness protection plan right now. <laughs> uh, last thing I want is that guy mad at me for any reason. Oh no no no. 
in Ghana, if you're listening to this, I'm sorry if, if I did anything in this in this in, yeah. in this conversation to make you mad. I am if, sorry right now. I said anything that upset you. I'm very very sorry. I promise you, I'm sorry. <laughs> Find a way to make it up to you. So Just now we're don't at punch the, me in the head. <laughs> so now we're at the the the, the co-main event of the night, sure. and this yeah. is the reason why I actually turned tuned in to this entire fight card was. I've been watching as bantamweight Sean O'Malley has been coming up and talking all kinds of crap, and he was in and out due to injury and a drug test and a this, that, and the other thing. And I've been enjoying the Sugar Show in a way that I did not enjoy the rise of Conor McGregor because I feel like when I'm listening to the kid talk while he's cocky, he's not like irritating at the same time <laughs> at least to me so i was looking forward to watching this fight and i knew that marlon vera was a a tough test for the guy like sure o'malley was ranked and vera was not ranked before this but vera is not a slouch fighter it's just hard to break into the top 15 at bantamweight that's, that's such a deep division just in general yeah. so you know the fight starts and they're both thrown hard and i'm like i don't even know how this is gonna go at this point like i was actually confused and uh o'malley kicked him in the leg and all of a sudden he's limping his foot's all folded up all over the place he's falling down like the first time i saw him fall down i was like oh his foot's fucked something's fucked well he was hopping around a bit and they they commented on the fact that that o'malley's uh, you know that his knee was hurt or something. That right. You could see him favoring it, and then once uh, once Marlon Vera kind of picked up on it, he it just was... went in for it. There, I was looking at some stuff on Twitter today, and there people were slowing down like portions of the fight, and it looks like he banged his leg up on a checked kick. Like they kind of like collided weird. They both like almost threw a kick at the same time, and they like hit each other like knee to knee, like ankle to ankle, and the, yeah, like, when he like was screwed up. But if he if his leg was folding if his or his his foot was folding like it was it reminds me of um Jamie Varner. Same. Oh yeah, and Michael Chandler. Yeah, yeah, and they where they were just you know that's ligament damage like that's yep. not that's the, he's got some he's gonna need surgery for that. Yep. So he's gonna be out again for a while, I think. Well, something that I saw floating around online, and I don't know how true this is, was the idea that he actually went in hurt that he had been limping even on his way to the cage. Really? That That's what some people were saying. I didn't notice it when I watched the video. Yeah, I wasn't but, even thinking that. But there were some people saying that, and like I said, I don't know how true it is. It was internet talk, but it, it, maybe there's something to it. Cause... I mean, was he limping or was he walking with swagger? Because, I mean, it is Sean O'Malley, and he's got this, like, aura about him now. I, I think it, from the way they said it, and I'd have to pull up the post again, it was something on Reddit where a bunch of people were talking about it, and and they said that it was definitely not, like, it was not him showing off or whatever. It was it was definitely him favoring that leg and hmm. walking funny on that leg. I'll have, to well, look, I'll have to go back and watch that. For a man favoring a leg, he was sure throwing it hard as fuck right from the beginning. So he might want to rethink that in the next fight if he comes in a little injured. Maybe not throw that so hard so often. But uh, you know what? Marlon Vera put the fucking bricks on this kid when it was time to do so. Yeah. Like, I it, I, am, I appreciate the, the effervescence of just beating the piss out of somebody when you can see that they're they're compromised and taking advantage of your situation yeah, like i don't want to take anything away from him because whether it was a check kick or you know o'malley like just injured himself or came in injured regardless you showed up you got in the in there the fight's on your job is to win the fight and i like it when somebody goes out to win yeah and you know what i this is a fight where if you got like five minutes to spare to watch it it's worth your time Yo, that fucking elbow, that one elbow that oh, he landed. Oh, oh yeah, rough, bro. Shit. <laughs> I thought he, I thought his head was gonna crack in half. Yeah. Oh man. That, that's like worth it just to watch for that. Like watch, the, watch the fight for that elbow alone. <laughs> <laughs> just get to the end and watch the elbow. That's it. Well, I'll tell you another funny thing that I was reading about during the day yesterday and then uh, last night after the fight. 
somebody posted on Reddit about the fact that somebody bet 19,000 on one of these betting sites that Vera was going to get a finish over O'Malley. And everybody was like, oh, well, that was really fucking stupid. <laughs> and, nope. and everybody was just talking mad, mad shit. And then all of a sudden, after the fight, they were like, yo, peace to the dude that put the 19K on Vera. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he won like $151,000. Oh, man. some crazy money. Yeah. And pe people were talking mad shit during the day. And like, oh, who the fuck would be that stupid? And then everybody was just eating it later on. Like, yo, got to give props to the dude who put the 19K. That's buying new house money, baby. Yeah. <laughs> that dude, that dude hit big. So oh, that brings us to the heavyweight fight. The reason for the entire event, Stipe Miocic, who's our, the champion, taking on challenger and former champion Daniel Cormier in what would be their rubber match. Going into this fight, I expected a finish, and I almost received it, but it didn't. And uh, it did kind of play out how I expected it to play out, but there were a few more wrinkles than I expected. Um, looking at this fight... My question was, in the first fight when Cormier knocked him out, was that just because he uh, uh, Miocic had just come off of fighting Nganu and was already damaged, and he got caught with a clean shot. I mean, if you're taking shots from Nganu, you're getting punched real fucking hard. And, and you're going to feel it for a while. Right. <laughs> Second fight... He was eating those punches a lot cleaner, but I wasn't sure if maybe he just was rolling with it. And I wasn't sure if going into this third fight, if Cormier was going to come up with a new plan to land that same hand a little bit better. And I was impressed by Miocic's adjustment in the middle of the fight to start grabbing that right hand yep. to stop him from throwing it in those situations. I think that alone won him that fight. But, I mean, Cormier landed that same punch, like, numerous times. A couple times. As he, a matter he of fact, he, he almost knocked him out in the first in round. In the first round. He almost got him. Yeah. But he but he did. He, you know, he. I was watching interviews. He said he was definitely shaken by that punch. And, you know, he had to pull it back together. But as the fight wore on, the more that they clinched in that position, the more he utilized that tactic of blocking the hand by actually just holding it instead of getting clipped over and over throughout as a constant throughout that fight because i think if he would ha if he wouldn't have uh held that hand we would have probably seen cormier win yeah no that was definitely a smart move and and definitely kept him in that fight without a doubt the well, other thing i was to Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Ren. My, my thing is, is that I, what I liked is that now it's the second fight in a row that it's happened is Miocic adjusts mid-fight. He Whatever yep. his corner sees and whatever he's seeing, you know, head on, he makes the adjustments. And Cormier made no adjustments in the, the second fight or this fight. Right. He was talking about all this wrestling that he was going to do. He's like, wrestling was my bread and butter. It got me here. This, that, and the other thing. He went for like that one takedown in the first round. Got Well, he got it. And right, then, but he got right back up. He got right back up, and then that's it. He abandoned it completely. Like I don't think there was there wasn't much more wrestling after that. More more so, it was uh, Stipe putting him against the cage and wet and like weighing on him. Yeah, yeah I, I was actually impressed with that because it would you would seem that Miocic wouldn't have the wrestling prowess to hold someone like Cormier against the cage at will. But I think. The physical size of Zipe made it possible for that to happen. Like he, he legitimately like, struggled to, to get out from that that position. But wasn't Zipe the lighter of the two fighters? Yeah, but he's taller. That's true. So he's able to just like lean in and lean on him instead of push. Like if Cormier is is doing it, he's got to actually apply like upward forward pressure, whereas yeah. it's a lot easier to lean on somebody and yeah, yeah, yeah. hold them in that position, especially right. if you have the overhook. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's where that height advantage definitely comes in. And so, yeah. it, there was a lot of talk about the eye pokes. That eye poke was like, that honestly, the, that the one that Steve Bay hit on uh, Cormier definitely changed the trajectory of the fight. Yeah. Cormier was not the same after that eye poke. No, not at all. No. And, and Mark Goddard, the referee, actually apologized on Twitter for that 
And he just said, you know, he just said the fact he, he's like, I can't call what I do not see. He didn't see it. Plain and simple. I mean, I could see where you would think that might have been a, a punch at, at the moment that it happened because I didn't see it as an eye poke until they went back and rolled. Yeah, the tape. when they showed the replay. And then I was like, oh, no, his whole fucking I mean, he was up to the glove in this dude. Yeah, eye. he was he was deep. He was deep in that motherfucker. And it, it sucked. But, you know, it, it's it happens. And and I guess, you know, one of the things that happens because there was a, an eye poke earlier with uh, where Stipe caught a little something in his eye. It's just the way these guys fight. I think it, it's the way a lot of people fight because it's it's a lot the, of people like, with these guys. Like there's a lot of open hand that these guys do compared to some, you know, some guys are just straight strikes. But, you know, these guys are going in a lot and it's just this is what happens sometimes because both of these guys have had eye pokes in past fights. Yeah, I mean, Cormier poked him so bad in the last fight exactly. that he had a detached retina. Yeah. Well, I think this one... Was uh, a scratch or like a... a it, this it was, a cornea of some sort. Yeah, I, I, it was either scratch cornea or detached cornea. I have to look it up. So It was, it was bad. I mean... <laughs> yeah. Either way, it, it, it's not good. Dudes are talking about like, oh, wh I didn't know Forrest Whitaker was fighting tonight. Oh, God. God. <laughs> <laughs> the internet is good for rough shit, man. Yeah. I mean, pretty much undefeated. <laughs> so, um, looking at this fight, I'm just trying to think of the next step. I, Cormier in his interview says, I'm not fighting again unless it's for a title. And then he goes on to also say, and I don't think that they're going to be giving me any title fights coming forward anyway, because, I mean, you've lost to John Jones twice with and you didn't look good in either fight. And now you've lost twice in a row to Miocic. What like what else could they do with you? And if you don't want to take another fight that isn't for a title, then maybe it's time. Maybe it's, well, it's time. he was saying the other day at the press conference that this is it. He's done after this fight, period. Yeah, but you know him. He doesn't want to go right. out on bottom. He's gone out on bottom two other times yeah. in his life, and this whole concept of not being the best is probably eating the fuck out of him. So he lost to Kale Sanderson in his final fight, uh, well, final wrestling match, and he failed to make the, like, the uh, failed at the Olympics due to weight cutting, and now he's failed at winning against two fairly dominant champions so it's just like is that going to eat at him is he going to be able to walk away and and you know just yeah, but take I don't, that out well go ahead Ren. if 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 i had his career because cormier is going to cormier is one of the greatest heavyweight light heavyweights he's only lost to two guys yeah. and and two and two of the you know baddest dudes on the earth like um his career if i'm him I'm, I'm a double champ. I'm a, I'm a former Strike Force champ. You know, I'm one of the best to ever do it. There's just two guys that got my number. I'm good to go. I heard that his, like, uh, family definitely doesn't want him fighting Jones again because of, like, the mental, like, thing that goes in there. Because fighting Jones is, like, a real emotional, like, thing. Win, lose, right. or draw. Like, it takes a lot out of them to even get him to the cage. And then if he loses a third time, like, then what do you got to do? You got to deal with the depression after that. Right. So I, if I'm him, he has a daughter coming in October or something like that. He, they're gonna have a, a girl in October. Dude, just go off, be a commentator. You know, do what you make money with via the UFC and other means. It doesn't require you getting beat up. I'm looking forward to him just being a commentator instead of being a fighter who does commentation work. Yep. Because when anybody in either of the two divisions fight, he's talking about it like he's fighting them. And I don't like that angle yeah. from the commentators. I want him to just give me, like Michael Bisping as a commentator. Now that he's not fighting is wonderful. I love it. Yeah, but I agree. But I, I'm, I'm ready for Daniel Cormier to move into that direction. And I feel like I will like him a lot better. I don't like him as a fighter because I feel like he's kind of a crybaby. Yeah, yeah I agree with that, too. And I think I agree with John. I think it's time, and I think part of that is because, like you said also, Len, what's next? I don't think there's anything left for him because what 
what fight is he going to take? Is he going to fight John Jones again? Any any other fight that he takes, there's a risk that he's going to lose. And then it's like for that, why didn't you just quit now? Yep. You know. I mean, he I honestly the, feel like he would have to go way further down the line than he wants to go to guarantee himself a win. No, and it's not worth it. Who else is he going to fight? And he de- he definitely doesn't want to cut down to 205 again. No. Like let, let's be serious. He looked really not in shape at all for this. Like, while, whether he came in at 236 or not, on fight night, he looked 245, 250. Yeah. Well, he's got, you know, like John said, he's only lost to two guys, and those two guys are top level. Yeah. So what's he going to do? Take another fight and get smoked again? He's he's 41 years old. He's Final got... time is not... Right. Well, I mean, just like what we were talking about with these other guys, that they're all topping out at, at 35, 36. He's managed to beat that because he started late. But like, right. how much are you going to how much are you going to play with that fire? You know what I mean? Yep. It's not worth it. And and like I said, in the end, he could go and take another fight. But if he loses that fight, then what does it do for him? It just it just fucks with his legacy a little more. It's like you've done so much. Just, just take it and run. You, you still got other prospects. You got the commentary job. You got the. Whichever, you just signed everybody's on. Everybody's happy with that. You just signed on to be the head coach at a, a high school for wrestling. Not that schools are doing any wrestling right now, but still. Right. So he's got. Uh, just, he's he got, got stuff. Plenty of other stuff going on. It's not like he's hurting for for work or whatever. It, and and he can walk away with his head held high. And if he goes and takes another fight, it's. It's a real gamble, and it's taking yeah. the chance that he's going to take another L, and he's going to go out looking like a lot of these other guys are, like Dos Santos' third loss in a row. Yep. You know, like, a lot of these other guys going out on a couple of losses. It's like I don't want to see Cormier get in there with like Lewis or Yarzino or any of these dudes that are heavy hitters, knowing Ganus, because no, if he doesn't have it in him to like take these dudes down anymore because he said before the last fight his back was fucked up and I part I partially think that that was the reason why he didn't wrestle Miocic that much even in this fight he just that doesn't want to admit sense. that his back is all still all fucked up yeah, if he's not going to go sense. in and take these dudes that are like real strikers down like dudes with the heaviest hands on the planet he's just asking to get knocked the fuck out yeah and why, and why, why get knocked out cleanly in your last fight Yep. Like there's there's nothing wrong with going five rounds with now the the best heavyweight you know of all time in the UFC like hey man I lost a five round war like that should be enough of going out on your shield like there's it proves no point if he goes and fights in Ganu and gets like decapitated right yeah there's there's no there's no win in that so just looking at the scorecards like my own personal scorecard I had at Miocic the first three and round five I felt like uh, despite not being able to see so good in the fourth, that Cormier still won the fourth round. I, I don't know if you guys had it the same way, but that's how I, I saw it. I gave the first round to uh, Cormier because of the knockdown. Because it wasn't, they were pretty even um, uh, with the exception of that. Uh, what are we looking at the scorecards here? I, I just put up the scorecard for you guys to see. This is the official. Yeah, no, see, my, mine matches more or less the first guy. Mm hmm. Um, I gave the first round. The fourth round is arguable. Like, I'm not mad if anyone gives them that. Um, but I thought Stipe won rounds two through five. And Cormier won the first round because of the knockdown. Because there, okay. really, there wasn't really much separating him other than that punch. I, I agree with that. but I mean, I can't uh, argue that. Yeah, I mean, looking at the official scorecards, the three judges, one, one gave one round to Cormier, round one. One gave round four to Cormier, and then one gave round one and rounds four. one and four to Cormier. But, but overall, Stipe got the decision. Yep. It, there was no I, question I going into that decision, at least for me, that Miocic had done enough to win that fight. Definitely. Yeah, Definitely. And, it, and also, and also, even if it was, even if you consider it that close, you got to beat the champ, and that wasn't. Yeah, Cormier did nothing in that fight that said, I beat the champ. That's definitely true. And I mean, even the look on his face at the end of the fight didn't say, I won this fucking fight. 
Yeah, yeah, he wasn't. The only thing I think he was a little annoyed with is that two judges gave it 49, you know, yep. only one round. But he was I mean, he was he was definitely upset about the eye poke, which is understandable. But yeah. I mean, there's nothing you can really do because because the, the ref didn't notice the eye poke at all. But that was also right before the end of the round. So when he went to the corner and they so were looking at it, they a, were like, it's If all they had fun. taken a point from Miocic for that eye poke, then we would have had a, a majority decision win either way. Right. It, it, would have, it wouldn't have changed anything. That's, that's one of the things that I thought about. In the end, it would still be the same outcome even if he took the point. But, but like I said, with Cormier, and, and, and you guys are saying it too, it's like he's only lost to two guys. Each of those guys of of the four losses that he had, each one of them was a TKO and a decision. Yep. So in the end, he's managed to, you know, he's managed to split it with those guys. Why take another chance and go out on another loss? It doesn't make sense. Just just now look at it. settle with it. You know. I don't think. Now, Dana, no, I don't think Dana gives him gives him another fight the only the only fight that they set up is the is the jones rubber match which serves no purpose well it's not even a rubber match he's lost two so it's just a jones third match was technically a no contest but like yeah that's true that's that's literally the only fight in my mind and i don't even want to see it and i don't think anyone else wants to see it because jones handedly beat the shit out of him both fights yeah Uh, right that's the only fight that he that they can make unless cormier just wants to fight people to be the gatekeeper to, to Stipe. But Which I don't, I don't think that's what he wants to do. Either. Yeah, so at that point, that's when Dana just goes, bro, like... We're done just, here. Yeah, and, and, and enjoy your, you know, being able to just eat what you want. And... He's going to be 300 pounds in no time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's be serious. But, so, just to kind of wrap this up, looking at Miocic, the, like, there are a couple guys that are right there. But Nganu is the only fight that makes sense right now, at least in my opinion, at heavyweight for that title fight. Unless they un- unless they want to leapfrog him and give him Jones. Right. The Jones, Which, the Jones, the Jones super fight is makes just as much sense. Yep. But uh, Dana said apparently in the post-fight press conference that although he would love to make that fight, Francis Ngannou is next. Yep. And, and he wants to actually see... Uh, Jones and Reyes run it back because I think everyone in the world thought, including me, thought Reyes won that last fight. I thought Reyes won that last fight too. Yeah. And if he didn't, it was damn close. Yeah. yeah. But the thing with, with Jones is much like when he fought Gus the second time, he's going to know all the tricks already. Mm-hmm. And I think he's going to blow Reyes' doors off this time. Well, you know, though, if he does that, then there you go. There's your There's your 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 pass to go up to the heavyweight and fight and immediately go right for the champion yeah i mean there's no reason if if you give me jones and say hey you know he's gonna go up to to heavyweight there is nobody else in heavyweight that i want to see him fight than the champion because he's right. earned it at this point like yeah, yeah. his personal issues aside he ain't lost yet like i don't give that that matt uh that uh that um, has- Matt Hamill fight, that's not a loss. I, I don't care <laughs> that he technically has an, an L on his 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 list of, of fights. That's not a – he was beating the piss out of him and that he got mazagotied. I mean, really, that's all it was. <laughs> you know what's funny is I met Matt Hamill at a, like, MMA convention, and the dude in line in front of me, like, met him, and he's like, dude, he's like, you need to fight Jones again. You were beating his ass. He's like, you'll beat him the next time. And I was like, did we watch the same fight? Same, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Jones was legitimately just sitting on his chest at will, dropping elbows. Like, yeah. there was at no point in that fight that I think that Matt Hamill had a chance. Yeah. But I thought that, no. I didn't think that going into the fight. Yeah. Anyway. Jones ain't lost the whole time he's been fighting. So, like, you tell me he's going up to heavyweight, there is no reason why he shouldn't be going to heavyweight to go get a, another championship if he can do it. I do think that Stipe would be a tough test for him. We know that Stipe is the right size for him. That's what I mean. I think, yeah. I think Ganu might would be a problem. Yeah, would be would, yeah because he's never been hit like that. But Stipe is probably only the same. That's probably the same. They're weight. about the Jones, same size. And Jones will have the reach advantage. Yep. And he'll, and he'll probably be faster. My only thing is, 
Stipe is fucking tough. That is true. He is Sorry a to tough son of a bitch. Yep, for sure. So that's a fight I'd like to see. Sure, would I like to see Nganu punch John Jones's head into the next like century? <laughs> sure, would love to see it. Like if you tell me that that's what's happening, I'm a hundred percent on board. Book the fight. But if he's going to heavyweight, it would only make sense for him to go up there for a title. Yeah, and I think I think it's I think it's honestly past due. I mean, even when he fought Dominic Reyes and Reyes, you know, gave him the fight. What was Reyes like ranked? Wasn't he like the sixth or seventh dude in the division at that point? So yep. like, why I don't want to see Jones fighting the number ten guy anymore. Like, I need to see you need to be cha- like you need to be challenged. I know he yep. was like looking for the like the consecutive uh, defense streak and all that stuff, but like you, if if you want you know if, if you want people to like give a shit about your fight, you, you need to go up to heavyweight now. You you you've cleared out your division like basically two times over. Time to time to go fight the bigger boys. See if you can hang with those guys. Let's get him some like the highest grade coke for a whole bunch of months <laughs> and let him get down to 185 and yeah. then go after that title too. Yeah, fuck it. <laughs> just let it. Let's let's just get him. Let's get him down, and then let him bulk back up. Like I, I would like to see him. I would like to see him fight Izzy. I think that's a good fight. Nah, uh, if he fights Izzy, well, if he goes to heavyweight, he's never fighting Izzy. No, no, he'll, he'll just be too big. He'll because he'll then he'll start putting on weight. Yep. Um, but if they, if that's a fight that they would have to make soon, and Izzy's gonna have to go up. Yep. So, which is, but but it, you know that's a that's a rough fight for Izzy though. It's definitely a rough fight for Izzy, but for the cocky kid, I would love to see him fight him because yeah. it, you know, I think that Izzy is as good as he thinks he is, but does he have the mental fortitude to stick to the plan and actually attempt to win? Like when you get into trouble with John Jones, I've seen enough people drown. Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I would just like to see somebody smoke John Jones. You know what? I'd like to see Vitor Belfort not now but when they had that fight he almost broke his arm and i feel like he just didn't want to break his fucking arm i want to see vitor actually go after it i think Dude, those I days are past yeah. i mean no and not not in now i'm talking of like course. when it happened oh i, I know she had actually just tried to tear his fucking arm off definitely it's a shame it would have it would have been Am I, did I watch the, am I watching a different fight in my mind? No, no. John, he, he, no. When he, no, when he grabbed it, it, it looked like it was it was a done deal. Dude, I almost ran outside and went streaking because I was so <laughs> – because, because I thought it was – I thought he did it. Right. And then, and then uh, he did – and then he got beat up for a yeah, round. It was done. <laughs> well, coming up, oh what, what's the next thing? I said that there's fights on Tuesday. Oh, which, it's, Frank, it's Frankie's fight, right? Yeah. Uh, Frankie, I don't care about you anymore, Edgar – versus uh, uh, Pedro Munoz, who I also don't care about. And then we got Ovin St. Pru and Alonzo Menafield. Again, don't really care about this fight. And as I continue down the list, it's just a bunch more of people I don't even know. So this yep. is just like a wasted card. I might watch it. It's on a Tuesday night. But again, it's, it's just filling time with no rhyme or reason. At is least. it? Is it just a regular ESPN card? Uh, yeah. It's ESPN, ESPN Plus. I'm okay. scrolling now. They don't really have anything worth a damn, really, until the Izzy Costa fight, which they don't even have a location for that. I mean, that has to be back on Flight Island, but not until September 26th do they have anything. I mean, they have Anthony Smith and Alexander Rakic or whatever the hell his name is. Yeah, right. That fight for August 29th. Yeah, and then this, yeah. this Edgar Munoz fight. So they don't even have – I mean, they have fights if you want to watch people fight each other, but they don't have anything to me that's worth really tuning in until September 26th when Izzy and Costa fight. Yeah, I'm looking at this uh, this announced bouts l- listing for UFC Fight Night 175, which is August 29th, which is less than like two – basically like two weeks away. And they don't even have the fight card like really flushed out. They just have – some announced bouts the only fight on there that i'm itching to watch is neil magny versus robbie lawler oh, just yeah, because i'm a robbie lawler mark like I, yeah. I love the guy like i'll watch robbie lawler fight as long as he just continues to fight like i'm in and i think neil magny is a, a winnable fight for him it's going to be a tough fight but i think it's winnable and if it's but, not then, Robbie, then then we'll have then, to revisit then this we fight. have to re- reassess 
Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna come back to is, is it time? Yeah. Um, the only other fight on that whole card that looks remotely interesting is Lamas versus uh, Ryan Hall, and it's whether Lamas gets his leg taken off or not. Yeah. <laughs> Like, will will Hall get a hand, get his hands on his leg, and if so, will he tweak that knee? Like that that's the the big question. Otherwise, that whole card is not very good, and that's just basically the same thing over and over again. And I'm I used to be high on Anthony Smith, but after uh, that last loss, um, I'm pretty much out. Yeah. Well, thank you, John Ren, for being here on the upgrade special edition UFC two whatever two fifty two and uh you know I've been Thank you John I've been Len Carmichael from Landmine Studios and this, as this always is Gary Mutley and the upgrade podcast dot net is where you can go to find links for all of our online podcast services and social media and all that good stuff. And we will be back here again. There'll be a new episode this Wednesday. And then we'll keep going with the usual weeklies. Yep. Unless uh, unless some special event comes on like it did today. You can look forward to hearing uh, John Wren's fine voice next Wednesday when his uh, episode is released. What is the date next Wednesday? Fuck if I know, bro. 19th, 20, 26th, right? <laughs> yeah, something like that. August 26th, the... The time traveling debut, even though he's on this show right now, he's going back in time to debut on the upgrade next Wednesday, the twenty sixth. All right, so your episode is now called Back to the Future. Back oh, to the Future. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks guys. Welcoming you back for the first time, John Ren. <laughs> it feels thanks. like the first time. <laughs> thanks guys. Talk to you soon. Hey. Hey.